Okay, we're gonna work our way through the first uh, scenario here to help people out as we do this lab. Uh, so here's my setup, and I'm gonna turn on my width to represent my volume. I'm gonna put my particles, and when I add in 50 particles, as the instructions say, those 50 particles at a volume of 10 is giving me a pressure right around six atmospheres. So I'm going to record that as a six in my data table, six atmospheres. And then I'm gonna change it to four different locations. So I'm gonna start way out wide at 15 for my volume. And it looks like my pressure has dropped down, kind of dancing in high, low fours to high threes. So I'm gonna call that 3.7. I'm gonna bring the volume in. So let's say like 12.5, because I like to be incremental. And I'm getting a pressure dancing between five and like four or three, so I'll call this 4.6. I've already done 10, so I'll drop it down to 7.5. And my pressure seems to be dancing between about 7.5 and 8. So we're going to call this 7.8. And finally, I'm going to close the volume down all the way to 5. And that is going to give me a pressure. Looks like we're right around 12 here. Now it's time for us to talk about the relationship and what's happening here, but we need to graph this. Okay. So to graph this, I'm going to go to veneer graphical analysis to graph this. And I'm going to start a new experiment. I'm going to do manual entry. And in my X, here I have my data. So this was 15. Then I had 12.5. Then I had 10. Now this is not in order, but that's okay. I'm just putting them in order. And then I had 7.5. It does not matter if you put them in order, to be honest with you. And then I had 5. So for 15, my volume was 3.7. I'm sorry, my pressure was 3.7. For 12.5, my pressure was 4.6. For 10, my pressure was 6. And 7.5, my pressure was 7.8. And then at 5, my pressure was 12. All right, so here's my data. And now that I have my data, I'm going to try doing a curve fit. So I'm going to click on the bottom left-hand button, and I'm going to apply a curve fit. And we know it's not linear from the lab, so we, and we also know this is a pretty simple relationship. So I'm going to choose inverse and apply that. And there's our inverse relationship. So it looks really good inside of here. Okay. And turn off my data table to maybe see that a little bit better. So we see that inverse relationship here. So then now going back to my notability, graphically, I know this is an inverse relationship. Okay? Again, just sketching it. So now over here, that pressure is an inverse proportionality, actually. Inversely proportional for that. Now, this is not in this my sheet, but on your labs it says to talk about collisions here. So if we are going to increase volume, we know that the pressure has to decrease in relation to that, right? So if we go from a big volume down to a smaller volume, that means we have less space. With less space, if you have the same number of particles in here, because we're not changing temperature or amount. So the temperature has to be held constant, the amount has to be held constant. So with less space, whoops, less space much means there has to be more collisions. With more collisions, well, that's going to mean make sure the pressure is going to go up. So in this case, we had volume going down, so pressure went up because we had more collisions here inside the smaller space. 
Down here for the concept check, if our volume is double, what's going to happen to the pressure? Well, they're inversely proportional, so if you go two times the volume, that it results in one half the pressure. If you want three times the pressure, for the volume, we'd have to cut it to a third of the original. And then down here, we have a 10 to 1 ratio for volume in a chamber. It gets compressed 10 times smaller, so we go from a chamber this big, and it's 10 times smaller. Okay, so if we had a pressure originally of 100 kilopascals and we made something 10 times smaller, so volume went down by 10 times, that means the pressure has to go up by 10 times. So we'll take this times 10, and that will give us a pressure of 1,000 kilopascals here. Okay, so that's kind of how you work through the first set. Use this as an idea and go through the rest. Keep in mind that these are not all going to be inverse relationships. There are going to be some direct relationships here too. But those are your two options, is either be an inverse proportional or directly related. Thank you.